Hey guys, Phil Baumhardt here. So for today's video, I'm going to be making a skein do out of a farrier's rasp. So basically, a skein do is a traditional knife for the Scottish Highlanders. Uh, typically it's seen tucked in the hose or sock of their uh, Highland garb. So it was kind of uh, derived from a last ditch self-defense weapon. Uh, but it's also just a good utility knife, great for hunting, uh, food preparation, anything like that. Uh, it's really a neat knife and it's got a cool history behind it. I'll kind of get into that at the end of the video for the uh, closing discussion. But this particular knife I forged out of the scrap steel uh, from my kitchen machete video, if you saw that one. So with that rasp, I cut it off about uh, here, uh, last four or five inches. And so that's what I use for making this knife. So as I get into the forging of it, I put some borax down on the teeth to kind of try to forge weld those shut or at least prevent uh, as much cold shutting as I could. I don't know how well that worked, but that's what that white powder is that you see me sprinkling on the rasp. So without further ado, we'll get the forge going. I'll show you how I made this.
Okay, here's what the knife is looking like after uh, it came out of annealing. So, got a lot of fire scale on there. Uh, so, the game plan for grinding is this is where the edge is going to be. So, it'll be kind of a spear point type uh, shape. I guess it's a little more of a drop point. So, I'm going to get going just grinding that out. <laughs> So I've kind of created an edge bevel with the file, but there's lots of deep gouges and lines. So I'm going to use the uh, the work sharp to just sort of polish up the whole thing. And uh, what I'm really trying to do is just get out any of the file marks or uh, grinder marks uh, before I put it back into the, the forge for the quench. So a lot of these Scottish knives have got um, scalloping or file work on the spine here. So I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to start with a, a small round file just to kind of get the indent in. I'll give it a shot. Okay, so I got some uh, oak flooring here, and since the two sides of it are flat, they'll fit together well uh, for slab type handles. So uh, they're a little thick right now, so I'm just going to split them down and see if I can work them into uh, usable handles.
Okay, so the knife has been uh, quenched and tempered. Did the triple temper on it. So now I'm going to let it soak in my vinegar here for a few hours, see if I can get some of that scale off. Okay, so I went through all the different uh, work sharp belts in this thing. This is good and sharp now. I want to show you right quick here. That makes me happy right here. Okay, so I got the handle shaped up the way I wanted. It's uh, sanded out to about uh, 220 grit. And so on the, the skiing dues, from what I've seen, they've all got a pretty uh, dark stain on the handle. Got some dark walnut minwax stain. And so I'm just gonna put a bunch of coats on this one day at a time. So this will be coat number one. So I'll let the handle dry overnight. So now I'm gonna get a second coat on there. Okay, so I got the uh, handle stained up. Now I'm gonna cut down my brass pins and I'm just gonna glue this whole thing together and it should be, uh, should be good to go. Okay, so today I'm going to be using the uh, the JB Weld Clear Weld Epoxy. So I'm hoping just to be able to squirt this down into the uh, into the handle, and this will work out nice and neat for me. Okay, so here's the finished knife. So again, that was only two layers of that dark walnut and then I put uh, put a little layer of linseed oil just just because I like the, uh, the way that the oil finish uh, looks. So with the traditional skiing dudes, I guess the handles were made out of uh, uh, bogwood oak, which is uh, oak wood that's been in a bog for about a thousand years. And so it's just, you know, kind of absorbed all that um, uh, dirt and minerals and all that is just embedded and ingrained in the wood and that's why they're uh, pretty much black in color and that's kind of where the uh, the name skiing do supposedly uh, came from because skiing do in Gaelic just means uh, black knife so uh, the hypothesis is that you know because they had the black handles that's what they were called uh, black knife there's also the uh, the theory floating around that they were used for uh, kind of clandestine uh, operations and uh, midnight throat slittings and that kind of a thing so that's why it's kind of you know black in nature but uh, I think that's just sort of 
uh, some tall tails, but sounds cool though, doesn't it? And the skiing do itself didn't really appear uh, much before the beginning of the uh, 1800s, so it's not that old of a knife as I had uh, previously thought. With the kind of uh, classic skiing do that we uh, that we think of was kind of the uh, thistle shape handle or the the stone set in the in the uh, the end of the pommel there. That's kind of a uh, invention of the uh, Victorian era, where there was kind of a uh, Celtic revival where there, uh, with the kind of the romantic notions of the uh, Scottish Highlanders and stuff like that. So there's a couple different theories as far as where this came from. Uh, one of which is that it was uh, um, kind of derived from the uh, the armpit knife, which I forget the uh, the Gaelic name for that one, but it was kind of a hidden blade that was warm um, under the armpit or on the arm itself. And this little book by uh, James Foreman called The Scottish Dirk, he has a uh, theory uh, where the ski and do may have come from uh, hunting knives carried by uh, Scottish ghillies, which is the uh, gameskeepers. So uh, after their uh, lord killed a deer, that was when their work really began and they were the ones that would uh, field dress it and butcher and stuff like that. So they would have a small knife like this for doing the uh, the gutting and then a larger knife, kind of like a, a dirk in size that they would use for uh, quartering the game up and butchering it. I guess the uh, the Scottish term for those hunting knives was Grolic knives. Um, and unfortunately, since they were kind of owned by the common man, they were hard used and apparently none of them survived today. Uh, and so a knife this size is what they would use for field dressing the deer and gutting it and skinning it and all that. And from my own deer processing, I can tell you that this is going to be a cool uh, knife to use for that sort of thing. And I do plan on using this as my uh, deer hunting knife this year. But real comfortable handle with those pieces of oak flooring. Uh, I like the little bit of a swell that's there. And then the, the handle is short, but uh, it's nice so that you can really easily switch grips with it from uh, forward grip to reverse grip. And then because of the curve there, you can put your thumb on that if you wanted to use it for some sort of uh, downward stabbing motion, you know, like a defensive knife, which, uh, I mean, any fixed blade is kind of a uh, last ditch defensive weapon if uh, that's what it comes to. But as a utilitarian knife, um, it's got a really good blade shape, and I know that it's going to work well as a uh, as a field dressing knife. But here's the uh, the sheath that I made for just a uh, simple sheath, a pouch style, but only goes into about there, so I can still get a pretty full grip on it when I when I draw it. And then the uh, the way that the belt loop is, it rides very high on the uh, on the belt, so when actually when I sit down and all that. The sheath isn't banging into stuff. It's, I'm not uh, crunching it on the chair and all that. But this is just kind of my take on the skiing do. Kind of a uh, modern reimagining of the uh, of perhaps the original uh, skiing do knife. Not the Victorian concept, but kind of the uh, utilitarian uh, working man's knife. But on some of the early skiing do's, uh, a lot of them had antler handles or um, this kind of simple design. And actually, this book, The Scottish Dirk, has a few good uh, photos of skiing dudes. I'll probably uh, roll in a few uh, photos there to show you. Interesting resource, for sure. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I appreciate the support. Uh, if you want to get your own skiing do, you can check out my uh, Etsy web store, Blackheart Forge. Uh, I'll be planning on making a few more of these if you're interested in buying one. Uh, and then you can also uh, follow Blackheart Forge on Facebook and Instagram if you want to keep up to date with uh, what's new. But again, thanks for watching, and until next time, be more Viking.